So once you lay out basic head, and even though the hair is sticking up, the hair it lies on top of the skull, so we don't want to count that in our proportions, but the basic proportions between is the the eyes fall at the midline of an adult skull. And actually they do for I found that that's true of some carnivores that carnivores that have rounder heads like tigers and lions that their eyes also are mid midway. And babies, even though their eyes are bigger and the proportions are all funny, their eyes are still pretty much midway. They're just huge. So I like to put a line and a curving line if the head is angled a little, like this one is a little bit angled. And a vertical line where, the, like the latitude and longitude. So this would be like the equator and this would be the longitude so that I can find the midline of the face. The jaw goes back from this and at the top of the jaw bone, where the bone would be, is usually the ear. And the ear usually lines up with the eyebrows, which is slightly above the midline, for the, which is where the eyes are. You would have the eyebrows above that midline. Now we've got a three-quarter angle, which is great for drawing because you can get a nice development of the edge with the overlaps and the nose. And you can see how the nose comes and just not a great tangent but it comes right to the edge of the cheek there. And then you can really see the form of the eye from the side, which is kind of cool. And it's also tucked a little bit behind the nose. So the eyes are at midline. And then halfway down from that, you're going to find the nose. And then about a third to a halfway down from that, you're going to find the mouth. So I need to add a little bit to his chin to give it that I mean, he's like 15 or 16, I think. So he's just starting to develop the more masculine features growing out of the baby face stage. And he's got one of those boy haircuts with a whooshed up hair, which is fine. Okay, eyebrows generally are a lot closer to the eyes than people realize, mostly because women tend to, to move their eyebrows up. <laughs> I had an aunt, my mother's aunt actually, so she's my great aunt. She plucked her eyebrows and painted them on up higher. She always looked surprised. And she did it for so long that her eyebrows never grew back. So then she had to paint her eyebrows up there. I thought that was pretty funny. Maybe not funny, funny, but funny, funny, funny in a way. Oh, be quiet, Nina, just draw. Okay, we'll do. So eyebrows, especially on males, the brow ridge will protrude, casting this lovely shadow over the eye, which can add mystery as well as depth to your drawing. A little bit of flow of the cheek. Make his nose a little bit bigger. Drawing with the white because it comes off and you can draw dark over the white a lot easier. I'm actually going to zoom in a bit more on his face because this is a pretty high res photo. So that's going to make it easier for me to see detail, which is nice. Let me go back to our image there. So the better the photo, even better if the person, of course, is modeling for you. But if you're working from a photo, the higher the res, the better off you are because you'll be able to see a lot more detail. And so it's nice if you can take, if you're going to do portraits of people, especially if you're going to do it for money, I definitely recommend taking your own pictures and not just having the person supply you with pictures because then you control the lighting, you control the pose, you control everything, you you know, the whole creative aspect of doing the portrait. And I think that's important to the process. 
you take your own photos, you can also have the option of, of the person not only having the photo to work from when the person's not there, and also so that you can really study it, but you can also um, have the person still sit for you in the same pose of the same lighting because you took the photograph. And that gives you the benefits of the live sitting and the benefits of having the the model as or the photo, photograph as well because you can work on the on the drawing when they're not around and things like children that tend to wiggle around a lot people who aren't professional models are a little bit harder to to draw so I'm going to switch to the dark to get this start building up this underneath a little bit more detail where the shadow is but just keeping it light don't want to overdo it it's kind of amazing how much the hair of the eyebrows actually sticks out we always kind of think of eyebrows as being flat to the forehead but they're not they're actually growing out away from the face And notice everyone's going to have a slightly different way the eyes go. His eyes have a very distinctive shape. The eye is actually pretty far in from the nose. It's amazing how, how far off the face the nose actually likes to jet. So keeping very conscious very consciously the layers that go into eyeballs with the layers of the eyelids the thickness of the skin the eyelashes you can see when you're really looking close up how this round round around kind of goes you move in a little closer on the drawing So you can see, I'm trying to get the the detail of the actual, and it disappears behind the nose. So we want to use the shadow to define the edge of the nose, not just simply an outline, but the shadow of the nose. But we're also looking at spaces and shapes. I can see. The nose is a little bit long. Bring that up a little bit. For once in a while, step back, take a squint at your work, take a squint at your reference, see if you've got the proportions correct. If you need to, you can always do the sighting, the measuring thing, which is holding it up, squinting one eye, and seeing. You can see it's very, very clear when I do that, that the nose is definitely on the model halfway between the chin and the eyes. The nose is an interesting structure because it's mostly cartilage. The bone itself stops right about right in the middle of the eyes there and the rest of it is all constructed from cartilage with flips especially when you're drawing males be super careful not to overdo the outlines of lips you'll want to really focus on the lights and the darks and mouths have a very distinctive structure. Let me get this in here and I'll show you a detail of how the structure goes. So sometimes I, I draw with by just by looking at the lights and the darks almost like that's kind of like how the camera obscura works in a way. It separates out the light 
so that you can more clearly see lights and darks. Now it's a little bit, just a good little thing, a little bit of uh, light coming through on the other side of the face here, where the shadow, the nose is casting a shadow. And not only is it defining the shape of the nose because of the way it's casting the shadow, but it's defining the shape of the cheek underneath. Okay, so when you're doing mouths, there's a specific structure. And you can approach it with the three cherry technique, which is what the French do. And you know, it's the fancy French paintings where this is the, the bottom lip and this is the top lip. So you get this like, little three cherry look. But the most important thing is that it's an overlap, underlap, overlap, underlap. It's almost like the letter M. I might have gotten my cherries upside down. Maybe it goes the other way. But at any rate, the top part, of the middle of the lip goes in the front. And then the bottom part of the lip comes forward on the two sides. And then the top part of the lip overlaps. And then the bottom lip. And then the top, there's always an overlap in the corner. And then there's the shadow underneath the bottoms of the lips there. There's always the fulcrum, which is the little, uh, it's like the seam on the face. Everything, it's all cut down right down the middle. There's a seam. So when you're drawing men's lips, almost all you, all you have to really worry, worry about is you get the shadow from the over the lip, top lip. And so our light's coming from here, say. There'll be a bit of a shadow around the bottom lip, like so. There'll be a cast shadow under the lip. Maybe a person has a d dimple in their chin. <laughs> you can always do that. And it's always going to be this little subtle overlapping. And then there's going to be a little shadow here. and underplay it when you're doing males and you can overplay it when you're doing females if you choose to but you can get a very natural looking sense of the lips and even though we're smiling even if a person's smiling this still tucks the top lip still tucks over the bottom lip there it's kind of interesting you can draw a pretty pretty convincing lip structure that way. You want to try not to outline the lips. Yosemite Sam, oh my goodness. Um, you want to not outline the lips, even on women, because outlines will flatten things out and um, it'll look like they're wearing lipstick. Young people don't have wrinkles at the corners of their mouths. They just have that little overlap. So when you're drawing older people, you got to be super careful about not accentuating that because that makes you look older. Now, the corners of the mouth is always fall in a direct line below the pupils, and his is no exception. Um, the inner portion of the eye, the inner canthus, is always directly above the place that the nose actually connects to the face. So if I was looking at it from straight on, eyes in the middle, there's the midline. So your eyes are not a very good midline, but and then halfway down for the nose and about a third of the way down for the mouth. And then from the pupils of the eyes straight down would be the corners of the mouth. It seems like it's too wide, but remember that this is just where the edges of it are, the, the mouth itself is right in the middle. The inner part of the eyeball is where the edges of the nose connect. And eyebrows tend to be a lot closer to the eyes than we realize. And then the ears usually are fall between the eyebrows and the bottom of the nose, usually, not always. Sometimes the ears move up and down a little bit. But there's an awful lot of head up here and the same is true when you go from the side, you're drawing a profile. 
you have like an egg shape for the cranium, and then it's like a face plate off the front, and then it tucks in with the jawline, and your ears will go right there, midline for the eyes, and then the nose will stick out. And there's a another thing that goes like this sometimes, but I find that it's not always true. The upper lip sometimes sticks out further than the lower lip, sometimes the other way around. But the eyes are always back from the head, and then there's a brow ridge. You want to just want to make sure you give them enough skull to actually have a brain. Oh, I didn't get that very well, but that's uh, sometimes you can see the line of the cheek right here. can't even really see the other side of his lips because of the perspective tucks back into this area behind. It's almost like he has epicanthal folds which are the heavier eyelids like Asians have. It's a little bit of the eyelid showing from this angle underneath, but not a whole lot. The eye is mostly dark because it's in shadow. But there is a little bit of lightning. You can see it on, if you look really closely on the reference, that under the, the pupil, the light comes through the cornea and lights up the other side. So even though we're not getting a good hot light on the eye to really you know, pop out a highlight, we are getting that little bit of light on the bottom inside portion of the eyeball cornea. And we're catching a little bit of a highlight on the edge of his eyelid. So you can pop those highlights wherever there's a little bit of what you would expect to find as moisture around the lips and around the eyes. Eyelashes are tricky. Guys always seem to have way more eyelashes than they need. And you don't want to over accentuate them. You just want to in just slightly, ever so slightly indicate them. I still advocate not going into too much detail in any one place while you uh, we need to, I need to work more of the overall face to get um, a weird glare on my screen so it's hard for me to see. Ears are awesome. They're so fun to draw because they they do this overlap, underlap, overlap thing as well, just like just like the lips do. And everybody's is slightly different. It's almost like a fingerprint. And you can almost 
define a person by the swirls in their ears. So I'll tend to switch back and forth with the light and the dark pencil so that I'm not just drawing outlines, but I'm trying to find the planes of light. go pick up my daughter. I'm sorry. I have to stop now. I totally forgot. All right, guys. Um, I'll finish this up next time. It was totally cool having you 